Uh, thanks, everybody, for uh, giving me this chance to talk to you about what we do. Uh, I'm the founder of Awe Company Limited. It's an augmented reality technology company that I started in 2011, long before any of this was on anyone's radar. Uh, and today I'm going to talk to you about one of the product lines and brands that we developed called Time Warp VR, which uh, is really an immersive location-based AR experience line. Uh, and it's really intended for tourist sites, cultural heritage sites, historic sites. And I'll tell you today just how it came about and what it does. And it's really a study in, I guess, product market fit, how new technology ends up working in the world. Um, so Fort York is where Toronto, the city of Toronto, was born. It was started with that fort. Um, and over the years, the city grew up around it, and its story was Sorry. And the story was completely forgotten, essentially, right? Uh, people don't know what that green patch is in the middle of the city as you're driving by on the highway. Um, and all the conventional ways that you know, people try and convey information about a place, plaques, tour guides, reenactments, none of it could really kind of compete with the overwhelming concrete jungle that it had amassed around it. You know, people could not imagine what had happened. Uh, and this was a problem for them. Uh, at that time, uh, around 2012, 13, we were looking for a place to demo some technology that we had built, uh, augmented reality technology, and I had asked them if I could use one of their historic buildings to, you know, stage this, and they agreed. And I'm going to show you what it is. Uh, this is where our story begins. And it's essentially an augmented reality drama simulation uh, for uh, involving digital avatars. Uh, it was built for five users using iPads. Uh, in a shared space. It's a shared experience. Everyone experiences it together, the digital characters and the real people. So if you can play the video. So what you'll see is five of us walking around. And as we walk around in this building, which is the oldest and historical building still standing in Toronto, we come upon digital characters in this room who tell the story of a a battle that happened there between Americans and Canadians, or British at that time, 200 years ago. Over here, child. Let me have a word with you. It's interactive. You'll be leaving with your mother tonight. Characters know that we're there. I remain to battle Brother Jonathan in service of His Majesty the King. Has the devil tied your feet? Go, I said. I said, go! He tries to take a whack at him. Oh, I'm watching a real user and an, inter and, and an avatar interacting in the same space. Men! This I'm guy comes in and addresses captain. everybody in the room. The Yankees are off our shore. At daybreak, all of you upstairs will leave with the captain to greet the enemy. Three cheers for His Majesty! Three cheers, I say! Huzzah! 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 That's great if you can advance to the next slide. So, you know, that was, uh, we ran it through about a couple hundred people uh, to really get a sense of the user experience and how people interact with this, you know, what it means to have this kind of experience. Um, and for us, the result of that was a patent that we filed and something else that happened, which was the city of Toronto, who owns this fort, saw it, and they were kind of excited, and they said, would you be able to build a visitor experience for us, you know? And this is a site that, you know, has 150,000 annual visitors. It's not the biggest historical site, but it's still a lot of people. I mean, we had built something for five users on iPads, and like, now it was this big thing, and what they had in mind was really big, which was eight, you know, historical recreations of what had happened there. Uh, you know, since a nine-acre site, people walking around. And so, you know, I thought about it, and I thought, well, what does this really mean? It means we're going to have to deliver an experience that, you know, recreates complete historical events. It's not really, it's a complete virtual environment that we're going to have to recreate for every one of these, you know, uh, recreations. Uh, characters, interactive characters, uh, all situated and scaled and auto-scaled in, you know, real space and time. Uh, indoors, outdoors, no markers, people randomly walking around. Uh, no internet. You know, no internet, because it's a city, they don't have internet, I don't know what you're going to say. Um, and using, like, only the device then, you know, and then which device? This was in 2013, it's like... And, you know, and in hindsight, I think, you know, anyone with any brains would have said, no, you're kidding, I'll never do this, but I said, okay, we'll do it. 
you know? And so that began a journey that kind of went on for a long time um, and only recently concluded. So what that really meant for us is that we had to kind of figure out a computer vision solution for, for dealing with um, this, this, this challenge, which we spent about a year doing. And, uh, and a, year, a year later, in, in the beginning of that summer, we came up with uh, you know, a solution, and we, and we had a demo. And, this was, and I'll show you the, 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 this prototype that we built, if you could play the video. By this time, we had a bit of branding, and you know, it was. So you can see there's no hardware except the device, and we built it on the cheapest tablet. You know, it's a Windows tablet, an Acer. At the portrait, pay the load, and then. And we had some interactivity, you could. Run out the gun! What's the tape, man? Forward! Forward. And it's all scaled to that actual environment. Uh, Ready! Red, you know, it mapped the environment outdoors. Ready! Fire! Fire! We built in a voice interactivity. And that is a historical fact. The Canadians missed. And lost the, and lost the battle, not the war, but they lost the battle. Um, and so that, that worked, and that gave us enough confidence to say, okay, I think we can we can go ahead and try this. So we spent uh, the summer really uh, building out the content. Uh, we scanned, did a li LiDAR scan of the entire site, nine acres. Uh, and that was really helpful because we had a kind of distributed workforce so we could collaborate remotely on, on the whole experience and how it was gonna go. Uh, we built it out essentially like a video game. Um, and you know, in, in a year's time, we were ready to do some Get the public in there, and you know we thought we had nailed it. You know we thought this was so this was the best thing since sliced bread, and we brought you know several hundreds of people in, and you know it failed. <laughs> it just failed because uh, and, and for reasons that we didn't really anticipate, uh, believe it or not. So we could play the video, and I'll show you what we had initially rolled out was the ability to people to walk around inside this 3D environment. There you see our chief scientist walking around with just a regular tablet inside a 3D world. It's all registered to the space. It was beautiful, you know, you're experiencing it. It was like that thing we did inside that building, only it was now outdoors. And we thought, you know, we can have all these people walking around and traveling through time. And they did, and they bumped into each other, tripped on the ground, fell down. It was, there were bodies everywhere. It was terrible. Uh, and it didn't work, you know. I mean, it was a great experience for one person, but you really couldn't have it with anyone else. Uh, it wasn't a shared experience. And it wouldn't work for that site. And so we thought, okay, we have to really simplify this, you know, and deal with the reality of people, um, and, which is what we did. Uh, we simplified. Uh, the biggest challenge for us, and this is what we addressed, was wayfinding. How do we get you from one experience to another across these nine acres? You know, it wasn't delivering the experience. It was like simple things like giving you directions. You know, uh, and so one of the things that we did was we, we fell back to really conventional things like visual landmarks. Go to where the cannon is, you know, or go to where the flag is and stand over there, you know? And so we used a voice to kind of navigate you much like an audio guide, give you directions to take you through the site. Um, and we used this beacon system, and I'll show it to you, uh, where you select a virtual beacon in a virtual, you know, uh, rendition of the space, and that takes, when you go there, in the real world, it triggers content. And that's essentially what you're seeing. Uh, we built it out on cardboard. Uh, we were probably one of the first cardboard developers because cardboard solved a huge problem for us, which was glare on a smartphone. You know, and so by putting it inside that case, and it made it more immersive. You're approaching a virtual exhibit. So there you go. If you want to see the Battle of York, wait by the flagpole and face the Gardner Expressway. Otherwise, keep exploring. From the flagpole, walk straight ahead towards the Gardner Expressway, about 10 steps. 10 steps, and literally, right walk over there. You know? And face the cannon. And the idea we'll is you stand still. Once, tablet, once the experience starts, you just When the move. GPS is caught up, the virtual exhibit will begin. It's not actually GPS, it's something else, but we didn't know how to tell people what it was, so we just said the GPS, because everyone knows what GPS is. And so then you get this experience, and you're standing there, and you're kind of immersed, and you can look around, and you're inside an event. This is the battle, the Battle of uh, York, when this fort was taken over for 10 days. Oh. 
And there's eight of these kinds of experiences as you walk around. So it's kind of augmentation of both the conventional audio tour and of, of a real historic place. And on it goes. Um, so we finally got some results from our surveys that pleased us. Uh, it worked. Uh, we had a net promoter score of about 9.4, and this was still a beta version. Uh, and the results really do speak for themselves. Uh, and the most pleasing thing for me was that people said that they would pay twice as much, or up between two and four times, the admission rate if this were included. And that was great, you know, because it was, it was, a, it was a long, long development cycle, mainly because we were working with a giant municipality, you know, and we had to intersect with so many different departments in, 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 that, in that government. Uh, and anyone who knows what it's like to deal with City Hall, you know, you, you know what it's like. So uh, it's launched this, uh, this fall, uh, finally, uh, and the City of Toronto is marketing it. And this is uh, to show you what the final experience kind of looks like, and this is an advertisement that's rolling out now uh, in the city. Happy music. So, you know, you, people go to the website, buy tickets. Every day I see another order. It makes me feel great because we share in that revenue. And, you know, it's, uh, it, it, it's, 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 it's really cool. Um, and, and so now where we're going with this is we're you know, taking it to other places and, uh, and we're actually looking at non-gated sites. You know, uh, Fort York is a gated site, you pay admission and that's what really enabled us to kind of develop this. Uh, but where we see a real opportunity is when you get out of the gated site and you go into public spaces and you say, can you make this available as an app that's just downloadable? And in fact, you can download the app and go to the site and have an experience. Or you can go to the site and just get all the gear there and just you know, rent it all. Uh, so those are the ways it works. Um, and that's the story. Thanks very much for letting me share this with you.